safe is guarded by my old friend, the Bobby from London. Even he would be curious to see a conductor in the freight car. The safe is guarded by my old friend, the Bobby from London. Even he... I'm not bad at picking locks, but I don't have my equipment with me, and everything's rocking and moving in here. Given these conditions, it'd take a while to pick the lock. That makes it too risky. I'm not bad at picking locks, but I don't have given... ventilation shaft supplies the freight car with fresh air. It also seems big enough to climb through. I'd say I found my way in. The cover has two hinges on the back. It's possible to open it, but the two screws on the front hold it closed. I should be able to move about freely in the train, as long as I keep away from Professor Lucien. The other guests don't know me, and conductors change several times during the journey. A new face shouldn't seem suspicious to anyone. Young man? Uh, yes, sir? Uh, tell me, when did they switch to self-service on the Orient Express? Should they not have informed the passengers about that in advance? Uh, forgive me, sir. I was... And what about my bag? Hmm? Did your colleague find it? I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't know. I expected as much. There will be consequences. And now, bring me my coffee. Of course, sir. Asshole. It's not good that he's so upset. It'll make it more likely that he'll remember me and be able to describe me later. I know that sort of person. Thinks he's better than others. Decorum, order, and obedience above all. Like the fascists in Spain. They beat my father just because he splashed a bit of mud on a military vehicle with his bike and then refused to clean it. He'll throw a fit if he doesn't get his coffee. The longer I make him wait, the more the situation will escalate. He'll throw a fit if he... Huh, a dish with old people's candy. Butterscotch, I think. I don't really like butterscotch. I prefer fruity, sour flavors. Sour puts a smile on your face. Beer, wine, champagne, gin, brandy, and whiskey. <laughs> the richest snobs take the same medicine as the poorest slobs. Some people would need a drink to steady their nerves doing what I'm doing, but not me. I want a clear head if I'm going to get this envelope onto the safe. Locked. Let's see. It fits! Huh. A lot of odds and ends. A hairnet, batteries, a half pack of cigarettes, an unused toothbrush. 
The bartender probably has to serve as a jack of all trades, like a concierge in a hotel. So, is there anything useful? Here we go, a small shaving mirror. No, I don't need anything else. A small portable radio. The reception is surprisingly good here in the mountains. I won't be able to use the radio, but the antenna, on the other hand, a thin, short metal rod that can be extended. Something like that might come in handy. There's still some coffee left. Even pigs get to drink from the finest porcelain. If I mess with the doctor, I might blow my cover. So I'll have to grin and bear it and serve our esteemed passenger his coffee. If I mess with the doctor, I might blow my cover. So I'll have to grin and bear it and serve our esteemed passenger his coffee. Coffee for the gentleman. Do you know what the problem with people like you is? Um, you mean our lack of a sense of duty or our skin color? Or a lack of respect for our elders? <laughs> we have so many flaws. He didn't even want to hear why it took so long to get his coffee. He just wanted to tear into someone, just wanted to assert his will. It's a sad life if you have to pump yourself up by deflating others. The mirror is so small I can hardly imagine how you'd shave with it, especially on a moving train. anything but the rear of the car through the slots. But that won't do. What I really need is a view of the front. tip of the antenna is sticky as hell. Okay, the candy is so sticky that it'll hold the mirror without any trouble. As I expected, it sticks. That's what I call DIY. The mirror is stuck to the top of the antenna, which I can extend about 60 centimeters. the guard. The safe is directly beneath the ventilation shaft. I could shimmy down the shaft and hit him on the head from behind. Uh-oh. Are you okay, Robert? Telling your report, sir. At ease. 
Any suspicious passengers come aboard in Zurich, sir? Hmm. Not really. It could be anyone and no one. But we've received support from the Swiss police. A certain Constable Zelda. Oh? Very motivated. Might get on our nerves. That limits my options. I can't overpower two people. I don't think I'll be able to slip into the carriage unseen after all. Oh, there has to be a way. I have to keep Inch happy. How do I get you onto the safe? Or on top of it? The safe is directly beneath the ventilation shaft. And Inch said something about a blackout and a tunnel. I could use the moments of confusion and darkness to toss the letter onto the safe. Might work as long as I manage to open the ventilation shaft and choose the right moment. Legrand has retired to a dark corner and the Bobby is hiding behind some boxes. Legrand obviously set a trap for the Raven. Unfortunately, the Raven knows. Is that what this is about? Does Inch just want to mock Legrand? lady didn't get on in Zurich, and she doesn't look like someone from Nancy or Basel. I'm guessing she boarded in Paris. Uh, she seems familiar somehow. I've seen her someplace before. Maybe she used to be an actress, and I recognize her from photos. She has the confidence of someone who doesn't have to prove herself anymore. She's rich, that's for sure, but it's not just that. I better not talk to her. Her eyes are intelligent and observant. Something tells me I'd only make life difficult for myself if I try to pull the wool over her eyes. The younger woman seems to be some kind of carer or companion for the older lady. I wouldn't like to be with her all day long. She radiates a certain restlessness and unease. I know people like that always have to be doing something. They feel useless if they don't have anything to do. I feel sorry for them. The elderly woman's carer can't keep her hands still, so she's knitting. Can I bring you ladies anything? Is everything satisfactory? Everything is wonderful, young man. Very good. Got it. I think Professor Lucien is still in the hallway, trying to get into his cabin. I'd better wait until the coast is clear. Sooner or later, the carer will miss her wool, even though it's just a little bit. The Grand is in the car. That guy is sharp as a tack. He'd see right through me. The ventilation shaft is a more realistic option. But to be honest, I only give myself a 50-50 chance of pulling this off. Anyway, time to get to work. I'm not bad at picking locks, given these conditions. The 
cover has two hinges on the back. It's possible to open it, but the two screws on the front hold it closed. I don't believe that anything really changed down there. Hey, my pistol! You'll get it back in Venice. Frightening me like that. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too. One just flew past my window. Be off with you. Oh, man. Ah, I can use... Phew, that was close. He left the lock open. How convenient. Let's see. A wrench, you don't say. This is too easy. I don't think I need anything else from the toolbox. And if I do, I know where to find it. A wrench from the toolbox should be useful. But I should only open the cover inside the tunnel. Huh, looks like it actually fits. What was that? Must have fallen out. Put that on the floor. Yes, sir. That was close. If the second screw makes that much noise, it's over for me. hinges on the back, if, but the two screws on the floor. No way. If the second nut also hits the floor, Legrand will know that I'm up here. My only option will be to jump from the train. They should have been able to open the door with pliers. I think the coast is clear. Oh, pardon me, sir. We could have used you a few minutes ago. I assume Inch is also in the compartment. He'll probably find some excuse to sneak out to trigger the blackout and engage the emergency brakes. No idea how he expects to pull that off. 
He usually leaves me in the dark about such things. Even after months of partnership, he still doesn't trust me completely. Just a few more days, and I'll finally be rid of that creep. And until then, he has to burn in his own personal hell with the Baroness. A nice thought. Obviously, they managed to open the door. I wonder who or what the archaeologist thinks locked it. Did he connect it to the burglary in London? Uh, probably not. Professor Lucien is on his way to Cairo, just like the Baroness. They both know each other. She chairs the Friends of the British Museum Club. I hope he's too shaken up to leave his cabin until we reach Venice. 